Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for more time next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Lena Oxton, better known as Tracer from Overwatch. She's the mascot of the game, which I think is perfect because she's one of the most salt-inducing characters in it. Good rule of thumb is that the more charming someone is in an animated short, the more annoying they are to play against in the game. Looking at you, May. Yeah. Rewind time. Wake up. Work out. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to blink forward with extra bursts of speed followed by pew pews. Next, we need pew pews, tiny guns that fire almost as fast as we can move. Finally, we'll get the ability to back it up, fixing our timeline to make it like we never got hit in the first place. For stats, we're using the standard pointer right from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and intelligence high. Dexterity is number one. You're hard as hell to hit and you're pretty great at shooting things. Intelligence next, pilots gotta be pretty smart, especially when they're wearing a harness that could erase them from existence with a misplaced wire. Charisma after that? Who doesn't love Tracer? Angry fanboys who think they can't date her because she likes girls, even though they already couldn't date her because she's fictional. So that means she's really likable. Follow that up with wisdom. Again, piloting requires good vision, at least according to my ophthalmologist when I was a kid. I always felt like I'd let him down when I needed glasses. Strength is a little low. You're in good shape. We just don't need it for anything. And we'll dump constitution. You have a health pool as low as D.Va outside of her mech? That's sad. Tracer is a human, but wood elves run a little bit faster if you'd rather do that. Varian humans get a feat, though. The lucky feat will give you a three recall die you can spend to re-roll an ability check, saving throw, or attack roll, or you could use it on an enemy to give them disadvantage on their attack rolls against you. You know the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, rewind time to make sure you do succeed the first time. Bump your dexterity and intelligence with your two free points, take the sleight of hand skill for your skill of choice, then modify the sailor background for athletics and persuasion instead of perception. Pilots are basically Basically sky sailors, which to me sounds like a cooler name, something to consider for all you pilots out there. Also, if you see a pilot in the comments, like their comment. Let's get it to the top. Unless the comment's bad, I guess. Like, then don't, probably. We'll kick things off as a fighter pilot. Sorry, just a fighter. First level fighters can choose two skills from the fighter list. Acrobatics and insight would be nice. Though the evil sniper lady did name herself after a spider that eats its mate. So maybe insight isn't all that necessary. The bad guys are making it pretty obvious. Take archery for your fighting style. Finally, we're using something other than unarmed fighting. Everyone raise a glass. This gives you plus two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons. I'm gonna recommend a hand crossbow for you. It deals 1d6 piercing damage and can only be fired once per round because you need to reload. We'll get you something to bump up that fire rate later, don't worry. You also get second wind, letting you rewind time to give yourself 1d10 plus your fighter level and HP once per short rest. That is your longest cooldown after all, but we'll get some more rewindy stuff later. Second level fighters get an action surge, letting you make two actions instead of one, one turn per short rest. Flip that fast forward switch, get in, get out, because you can also use it to dash or disengage. It doesn't have to be for an attack. But the real way to go faster isn't in the fighter class. You need to be a wizard. First level wizards get a spell book. They can put up to six spells in, but oh my God, wizards get too many spells and I want this video to be a reasonable length. So we're gonna focus on the amount of wizard spells you can have prepared per long rest and you can take any extra ones you like. Sound good? Don't answer, I can't hear you. That's not how YouTube works. Long Strider increases the target's movement speed by 10 feet when you just wanna book it. Jump triples the target's jump distance for a minute. Neither of these are concentration, so flavor it like a little bamf. We'll get bamfier bamfs later, but I don't wanna use them just to clear a 30 foot gap. That'd be kinda lame. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, which is a full round of Overwatch that you can be twice as fast as everyone. Hooray. You also get cantrips, but I don't really like any of these for Tracer, even though we'll get a lot of them. Message lets you whisper something to someone 120 feet away that they can respond to like an earpiece. Light creates a bright light that you can use to see in the dark with your dumb human eyes. Because the first level spells are so much more tracery, it's nice to have arcane recovery, which lets you recover spell slots equal to half your wizard level on a short rest while you recharge your timey whiny thing. Second level wizards can choose a school and the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount gave us the Chronergist, a subclass devoted to magical time manipulation. And I'll explain exactly why I didn't use it later, but feel free to get mad about it in the comments. Your anger pleases the algorithm. School of Divination will give you Portents, which are two d20s that you can roll at the start of a long rest. You can then replace an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw for yourself or another creature you can see as you manipulate your knowledge of the immediate future because you've already been there, done that. For this level spell, Featherfall reduces falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. There isn't any falling damage in Overwatch other than falling off the map, I guess, or whatever Sigma does. But this will keep you, Winston, Genji, Benji, 
and Kenny G all safe. I don't know what your party comp will be. Maybe it'll be Overwatch inspired. Maybe you'll have a saxophone ranger with a cocker spaniel familiar. You know better than me. Third level wizards can learn second level spells and Misty Step is the tracer spell, letting you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action on your turn. So you can run 30 feet, teleport 30 feet and shoot someone all in the same round. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, but let's scoop up the crossbow expert feat. So you can fire multiple shots with your crossbow in the same round. The ability to fire a hand crossbow as a bonus action and you can fire a crossbow at short range without disadvantage fitting for you since you actually do better shooting up close for this level spell blur lets you move so fast you're harder to hit giving enemies disadvantage to hit you for up to a minute depending on your concentration while you zip around unfazed fifth level wizards can learn third level spells and we need a pulse bomb fireball will do it for me this creates a 20 foot radius sphere that forces a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus on creatures inside dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail have as much to those that succeed it's actually the first time we're using our intelligence modifier for spell casting, and spoilers it will be the last which works out nicely because i want a bunch of feats and those cost ability score improvements which we can get with more fighter levels but not the third level fighter we need to choose a martial archetype and the explorer's guide to wild mount introduced the echo knight a subclass that creates clones of itself to teleport to i'll explain why we're not using it later but for now get mad in the comments your anger pleases the algorithm here's a quick hint though tracer doesn't clone herself Eldritch Knight gets Weapon Bond, letting you pick a weapon that you can recall to your hand as a bonus action, as long as it's on the same plane, so don't leave your pistol in the Nine Hells. You can learn two Wizard Cantrips, Mending fixes a small crack in something, or puts two pieces of something back together, and True Strike makes Power Builders angry, but I wouldn't have to put it here if we didn't have people being gross in the comments. So remember, if you don't want your mom reading your comment, don't put it in the comments, because my mom reads the comments. Hi mom, love you. Anyway, for first level spells, Mage Armor lets you give a creature AC equal to 13 plus their dexterity modifier for eight hours. Give it to yourself. You're really hard to hit. Shield will make you even harder to hit, giving you plus five AC as a reaction. These both work as Eldritch Knight spells because Eldritch Knights can learn Evocation and Abjuration spells and a couple spells that aren't from those schools, but we need them later, so we'll talk about them later. Since you're multi-classing spellcasters, go to page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many slots you have at any given level. You can figure it out. I believe in you. Fourth level fighters get another ability score improvement or feat. I want more feats, specifically the mobile feat, which adds a permanent 10 feet of your movement speed to your feat. You can ignore difficult terrain while you're dashing, and if you attempt a melee attack on a creature, they can't make opportunity attacks against you. So, if you want to make a quick getaway, just add a little punch combo in there before darting across the map. Fifth level fighters can do that even better with extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action, not counting your bonus action from the crossbow expert feat, for some really rapid fire. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, and we're actually going to take it this time for dexterity. Even though we're not done with the feats, we just need to be quicker on our feet before we take another feat. Basically, we're putting one feat in front of of the other. <laughs> That's a pretty good pun, right? Seventh level Eldritch Knights get War Magic, letting you attack as a bonus action after you've used a cantrip with your action. So if you really want advantage on your attack, you could use True Strike and shoot someone in the same round. Or you just try shooting three times and hope you hit. Up to you. I'm here to tell you how to build, not how to live. Eighth level Fighters get another ability score improvement, letting us cap off our Dexterity modifier for a plus 12 modifier to your attack rolls, making you incredibly accurate. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind trading in some of that accuracy for damage. Shoot, I just got ahead of myself, rewind, pretend I didn't say that you can also choose a second level spell from any school of magic magic weapon makes a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances it adds one to attack and damage rolls but since you're a seventh level multi-classer you can cast a fourth level spell and casting magic weapon at the fourth level bumps that up to a plus two at bonus to the attack and damage rolls since you can't learn fourth level spells anyway this is a solid option for that slot it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration so try not to get hit to get the most out of it ninth level fighters get indomitable letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest just another way for you to back it up and try again. 10th level Eldritch Knights get Eldritch Strike, giving creatures you hit with an attack disadvantage on saving throws against your spells until the end of your next turn, which is just fireball for you. But if shooting someone makes them worse at avoiding your pulse bomb, I'd do that. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, so you can attack three times with your action, six times with an action surge, and an extra time with your crossbow expert bonus action for some crazy rapid fire action. To get the most out of that, 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The sharpshooter feat lets you fire at long range without disadvantage, ignore all but full cover, and subtract five from a ranged attack roll for plus 10 to the damage roll. So with a plus two magic weapon, you can make seven attacks while still having a plus 10 modifier to the attack roll and deal seven D6 plus 119 damage in a single round. 
Who knew that a damaged character could deal so much damage? I thought the healers were supposed to do that. Isn't that what they made Moira for? 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable for another rewind. Worth noting, this can be used on death saving throws, which is nice because with your HP, you're going to be rolling a lot of those. You can also learn third level wizard spells as an Eldritch Knight, if that makes sense. And you should still have a non-evocation abjuration option. So I recommend Blink for another way to blink. This lets you roll a D20 at the end of each of your turns for a minute. If you roll an 11 or higher, you wait for the next turn in the ethereal plane, meaning nobody can hit you from the material plane. When you come back, you choose an unoccupied space within 10 feet of the place that you left, meaning that in addition to making you immune to damage 45% of the time, you can also get some extra movement. There's also no concentration required, so you can have this up at the same time as another spell you want to concentrate on, like magic weapon, for better pew pews. 14th level fighters get our last ability score improvement. Round up your intelligence and charisma because odd numbers are bad numbers, and also because that'll make Make your fireball a bit more accurate. This level also lets you learn another spell that is an evocation or abjuration, so grab haste. This will make you go extra fast, doubling a creature's movement speed, adding two to their AC, they get advantage on dexterity saves, and another action they can use for one attack, a dash, disengage, hide, or object using action. A while ago, somebody in the comments said you can't cast haste on yourself, but that's wrong. I guess congratulations, I noticed you and acknowledged you, but you're wrong. As long as you're within range of yourself, you can cast spells on yourself. But after that minute is up or you lose concentration, you won't be able to take actions or reactions for one round while you wait for your cooldowns to reload. Keep in mind, you can't concentrate on this and magic weapon at the same time, so I'd use this if you want to play more defense for that AC buff and magic weapon if you want to absolutely rip through people. Our capstone is the 15th level of Eldritch Knight for Arcane Charge, letting you teleport 30 feet when you use your action surge, either before or after the extra action for a free Misty Step once per short rest. That's nice. So let's talk about things we didn't do here at the end of the build because there's a lot of things we didn't do because there always is. First, Horizon Walker was the original plan, but that's just for an ability you get at level 11 and the other 10 levels of Ranger wouldn't be as good as Fighter for going fast. Shadow Monks can't teleport during the day, so I didn't choose that for the same reason I didn't choose it on the Nightcrawler video. I didn't use Artificer because Tracer doesn't build her stuff. Winston does. I didn't use Warlock because Hyper Intelligent Ape isn't a packed option. Tracer doesn't summon a ghost clone, so I didn't want to do the Echo Knight, even if the teleportation would have been nice. Chronogest's effect timelines of other people while Tracer's power affects herself, so divination works better for that because Portin lets you kind of rewind time. God, I hope that covers everything, but feel free to tell me why Tracer is actually a barbarian in the comments. Again, your anger pleases the algorithm. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. Short answer, very. With haste up, you can attack eight times in a round with a plus eight modifier after the sharpshooter penalty and a plus 15 damage modifier on a hit for 8d6 plus 120 damage when all is said and done. This is only for one turn because of your action surge, but that's still 8d6, which is fireball damage on top of 120 damage. That's nuts. Thanks to Sharpshooter, you can fire the hand crossbows at a max range of 120 feet without disadvantage, and with 130 feet of movement from Longstrider, Mobile, Arcane Charge, and Haste all paired together, you can be 250 feet away from the target by the end of your turn. Bear that with 20 AC while Hasted with Mage Armor, 25 with a Shield Reaction, and a 45% chance to not even be in the same plane thanks to Blink, 3 Luck Die, 2 Portents, and 2 uses of Indomitable, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to get away. But you need to do that because you probably have less than 100 HP, so you can't take a lot of hits. You've also got a lot of wind up to turn into that immortal time goddess and your enemies might not be too keen on giving you that time finally eldritch knights don't give spell slots very quickly meaning you could run out faster than you were counting on but tracer is all about doing things quickly including ending a fight dive in pew pew then dive out just watch out for another sharpshooter they could make you look a little foolish girl Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. If you're finding yourself with too much time on your hands, why not check out Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun?